OK, so this is sample assignment three, question three, the cost volume profit analysis. They say to us, Alma door, PTY Limited manufactures the standard type of wooden door, and the following are the budgeted cost. All amount excludes VAT. So they give you the raw material, direct like labor, the factory foreman's wages, the rental of the factory, the rates and taxes, the sales preps commission, advertising cost variable, short term um, um, quality controller, and the carriage on with the raw materials purchase. So whatever you see here is what I just copied here into this table in PowerPoint. So this this is not anything new, it's just a copy of what we have here. Then they say to us, the first thing that we must do is calculate the variable cost per unit. Now, this is actually a giveaway because they have given us either a cost per unit or cost per month. And if there is a cost per month, then we know it's a fixed cost. And if there is a cost per unit, we know it's a variable cost. So all of these are simple. The raw materials is 840. The direct labor is 160. The sales reps permission, uh, commission is 150. And the variable indirect materials is 30 rand per unit. The only thing that they trying to catch us out, maybe, not really even catching us out, just a little common sense here. They say us that the carriage on the raw material purchase is 200 per batch to produce 10 doors. Now, it doesn't help that we have this as per 10 units and everything else per unit, so we must change this to per unit as well. And if 200, it's 200 rand per 10 doors, then it will obviously, if we divide it by 10, be 20 rand for one door, and then we can just add the 20 to that, and then we see that our variable cost per unit is 1,200 rand. Okay. Just change my view here a little bit. I think that's confusing. Um, let's go to normal. Then it doesn't have that little thing in the background. Okay. So now we've calculated our variable cost per unit as we were supposed to. The second thing that we are supposed to do is we are supposed to calculate the fixed cost per month. Well, that is everything that I marked for you in green. It says per month, per month, per month, per month. All of this is fixed cost. We still have to pay the foreman even if we don't produce a lot. We still have to pay the rental for the factory. We still have to pay our rates and taxes. We still have to pay our advertising cost, our short-term insurance, and our quality controller because these are monthly expenses. So it's easy. In this case, we simply go and we add all of that and we get an amount of 13,650. Okay. Now, the next thing they tell us to do is to calculate our, the contribution margin per unit sold. Okay, So basically, they're asking us what is the our profit margin or our contribution margin. Well, before we do that, we first have to calculate our gross profit. So here we start with our sales price. Okay, That is given 2,250 for each unit. They say plus VAT. But now we do not care about the VAT. That is money we collect on behalf of SARS. Doesn't play a part in our gross profit. Our gross profit is excluding the VAT in any case. So now we say our sales price per unit excluding VAT is 2250. What is our gross profit per unit? Well, our gross profit will be the difference between that sales price and our variable cost that we just calculated up there. So if I then take my sales price of two, uh, 2,250 and I subtract my 1,200, I get an amount there of 1,050. Now that I know what my gross profit is, I can express this gross profit of 1,050 over my sales price as a percentage to see what my margin is. So I have my gross profit. I have my sales price. I divide the one by the other and I simply say multiply it by 100 and I express it as a percentage. So now I know that my gross, that my contribution margin is 46.67%. Then 
they say next thing is calculate the monthly break even points per unit sold. Now, the way to do that is simply to take the fixed cost that we have, it's calculated there, that we are going to divide by the gross profit per unit. Okay. Now, our gross profit per unit is what we calculated there. Okay, so we have both our fixed cost and our gross profit per unit, and when we calculate that, we get to 13. Okay. Now, later on, when we are supposed to draw the graph, we win. This is now our guide because it must get to 13. Because it's a graph, it might be a little off, it might look like we're almost not, but must be very close to 13. Okay, and then they say, How many units? This is now the little application question. How many units of the product needs to be sold in order to make a net profit after tech tax of 36,288 Rand? Assume a flat tax rate of 28% for companies. Now, okay. What I'm saying to you is the general rule is, is that our net profit after tax is equal to our gross profit minus our fixed cost minus the tax and all of this we have but we do not have the gross profit okay because that's the question how many units must be sold okay but everything else was given so now i'm just going and i change gross profit to the subject of the formula so our gross profit is equal to my net profit plus my fixed cost plus my tax okay they gave us the net profit after tax or the required net profit after tax 36,288. Now I need to calculate my net profit before tax. Okay, so my net profit after tax is when the 28% has already been taken out. So how do I put it back? I multiply by 1.28. So when I take the 36,000 and I multiply it by 1.28, I get 46,499. Okay. Now I know that. Now what about my fixed cost? I have my fixed cost there. It's given. We calculated it as 13,650. But that is per month. And when I talk about my net profit after tax, that that is per year. So I must take my fixed cost and I must multiply it with 12 and then I get the 163,800. Okay. Now I can see that my gross profit that I require is 210,000. It is the sum of the fixed cost plus that required net profit before tax. So if I take that two together, I get 210,248. If I want to know how many units that is per year, I must divide that by my gross profit per unit. Okay, and I have my gross profit per unit, remember, gross profit per unit, 1,050, I've calculated it. And then I get to 200.2368, and obviously that I must round up to 201 units per year. Okay. Now, obviously that's going to be a little bit more than 15 per month, now because I need this net profit. For me, if I don't get that net profit, I'm saying, you know what, it's not worth my while. OK, so now I have done all the calculations that was required. Then they say to us, use the grid in your answer book. Now, I don't didn't use that grid. I used the grid that I generated here uh, in your answer book to make a graphical cost volume profit analysis of this product. Use monthly rand values where applicable and clearly show the following. So now we're not going to use this 163,000 for six cost, we are going to go back to the 13,650. And a good tip is if your if your fixed cost line is at 13,650, you must pick a scale that is more or less three times that. So that is what I did in the graph. I go, whoa, whoa. Unseeable. Let me actually maximize the thing for you. And uh, see if I can't hide my ribbon. Hide ribbon.
Why is it not allowing me to show tabs only? Okay. Now I've hidden the stuff a little bit. Now I can see a little bit better. Okay. So what I'm saying to you, I know that my fixed cost line is somewhere here at 13,600, whatever that amount is. So that is the first line I draw. So I said to you, make sure that you choose a scale that goes to about three times that. So I've done that. Okay, I've actually gone a little bit higher. Okay. Uh, once again, I don't like this view because it's got the background. Okay, this is better. Oh, my lines disappeared. Why are my lines disappearing? <laughs> okay, I don't know why that happened. It's funny. Okay, so my fixed cost line is here at 13,600. It's a straight line because it is fixed. It's going nowhere. Then they say we must also put in there our variable cost line, our sales line, and our total cost line. Now, for both sales and variable cost, they will always start at zero. Okay. So um, I then had a look at my scale because I need a nice way to draw it. And I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to pick 20 units. And when I took 20 units and I multiplied with my variable cost, remember my variable cost that I've calculated um, per unit is 1200 so now if i take the 1200 and i multiply it with 20 i get an amount here of 24,000. now that's just a nice plot place to put on the diagram so that i now know this variable cost line of mine must go from zero up and it must cross the for 24,000 rand year at 20,000. okay my sales line, I know what my what my sales is. It's 2,500. So now I'm saying if I take the same thing at 20 units, okay, then I know that when I get to 20 units, uh, more or less my sales must go to 45,000. So that's what I was trying to do here. I said... Um, that line is somewhere between 44 and 46. It's just the way I chose my scale. And so that is my fixed cost line, oh, my sales line. Okay, also it starts at zero. I don't make any money if I don't start anything, but obviously this is the steepest line on my curve. And then what I did is I just make sure that I draw a line that is parallel to my variable cost line starting on the fixed cost line. Why? Because my total cost will always be my variable cost plus my fixed cost. So this gradient here, the difference between the two lines must always be the same. So I simply start here on the fixed cost line and I draw a line parallel to my variable cost line. And then it cuts somewhere here. And I see that that place where it cuts is at 13 units because I've now I know that I drew it correctly because it was supposed to intersect at 13 units and 13 units um, multiplied by my sales price is 29,250. And so I've just said there that my break even is at 29,250 or 13, well, and 13 units. Okay. And so now I know I must, if I don't make 13 a month, I'm not making a profit. And there, that is your graphical representation. 